Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Zaman. Ahlan wa sahlan. Marhaban. Welcome to this uh, video. Right, we are going through Muhtasar al Quduri. Alright, so uh, the text that we are covering is this text here. Now, as you can see, I have slightly cut down on the Tarkib. Well, not slightly, a lot I've cut down on the Tarkib. And I am focusing more on the text now, right? Trying to explain the text. If you guys enjoy this, if you guys say that this is very uh, helpful for you guys, first of all, hit the like button. And then um, put in the comments as well of what you like about the videos and how if there's any sort of like feedback you can give how i can possibly improve future videos of this particular series right so let's start then so wala yusalli at-tahir tahir is from tahura yathuru yeah or tahara yatharu tahir is someone who is clean right meaning someone who is not suffering from some sort of a, an illness here so although it means clean it's referring to someone who's not some suffering from some sort of like illness Salas is talking about in, uh, intermittent, so someone who has, uh, you know, urine drops that they can't control that come out randomly. So this is known as salas al bowl, right? Salas al bowl is urine, so intermittent salas al bowl. Uh, Atahira, this is referring to a woman, a woman who does not suffer is a healthy woman who does not suffer from dysfunctional bleeding, and mustahada is a woman who suffers from dysfunctional bleeding if you want to remember more about this rule then if you go back to the videos i did on uh, menstruation in this series check them out um right walal qari qari qara yaqra'u is a reciter yeah a reciter khalf al ummi ummi means someone who is not educated but here it refers to someone who does not know quran so they could be educated they could be a doctor or whatever maybe they accepted islam they don't know how to read the Quran, they haven't memorized anything. They are called ummis over here. Okay. Muktasi is from iktasa, yaktasi, iktisa, and it means someone who is wearing clothes, a clothed person. Al Uryan is from Ara Yari, Uryan, naked person, someone who does not have sufficient clothes to cover the naked part of their body. Um right, let's put their calf seen. Wow. Al Uryan Ain Raya. Ya umma, amma ya ummu. Hamza mim mim, it means to lead. And mutayamim, you guys should know mutayamim by now. Right, so mutayamim, you guys should know that. I've actually done a whole chapter on this. So you guys can check it out and let me know as well what you think of those videos. Mutawaddi'een, right, so that's also something that you should know. It's from the word tawaddu, wudu. So what does mutawaddi'een mean? Put it in the comments. Al masih, masaha yamsahu, it means to wipe. So what is a masih? Put it in the comments. Um, al Hufain al Ghas al Al Hufain al Ghasilina. Right, so Ghasilina is washers, not the things that you put inside of taps, but people who like wash with water. The opposite of wiping. So wiping over leather socks, and people who don't have leather socks, they wash their feet. So they're called washers. Okay, Khalf al Qaid Qaid. Right, means someone who is uh, sitting. Qaid yaqadu. Uh, should know all that. خلف المؤمي, right? Mu'mi means someone who does ishara, indicates. And muftarid is from one who is praying a fard salat. So if you're praying a fard salat, you are called a muftarid. And mutanaffil, um, tanaffala, yatanaffalu, tanaffulan, it means someone who is praying nafal. And then you've got, um, right, the rest of it should be fine. Okay, we have to keep now. So Tahir here is going to be the fa'il of Yusalli. Khalf is going to be mudaf and it's going to be dharf. That's why it's mansub. Salasul bowl mudaf mudaf ilayhi. That's going to be the mubtada. Uh, and bihi is going to be the khabar. Walad Tahir. Tahira, sorry. Tahira is going to be atof onto the previous one. That's going to be the fa'il. Khalf al mustahada is going to be dharf again. Ulal qari. And Qari uh, is someone who can read. And Khalfa. So all of these are Ataf. Walal Muktasi Iktasa Yaktasi. Now you're not going to see the vowel on Muktasi, right? Does anyone know why you can't see the vowel? You don't say Muktasi you, although it's Marfu. Right? It is technically the file. Ataf onto the file. But put in the comments if you know why Muktasi you don't see the um, 
you know, the vowel on there. خلف العريان. So عريان is مضاف مضاف إليه. Again, it's the ظرف. Um, يجوز أن يأم أما يأم right. متيمم. So فعل plus the فاعل. متوضئين is the مفعول به. And then you got الماسح مسح يمسح. The same thing. All of these are exactly the same. Right. غاسلين is مفعول به. ويصلي القائم فاعل يصلي خلف القاعد ولا يصلي الذي يركع ويسجد خلف مضاف مضاف لي ظرف. Right, so this is uh, okay. I didn't mention this earlier, did I? So مؤمي is from وما أه yeah وما أه. Right, so it means to إشارة to do indication. Right, so some people who can't do ركوع and سجود they do like indication. Okay, so muftarid is someone who is praying a fard, right? So a fard, and uh, he is going to be the fa'il of yusalli, khalf, khalf, again, mudaf, mudaf, same thing as before, it's going to be a dharf. Um, wala man yusalli fardan, khalf, uh, khalf, mudaf, and then fardan akhar. Akhar is the sifa of fardan, okay, fardan akhar. Yeah, all that becomes the mafulbi. Now, I want to ask you a question. And that question is, what vowel, or why is akhar only a single fatah? Why is akhar only a single fatah? Okay, so that's your question for you guys. You saw al-mutanaffir, khalf al-muftarid, right? That's done. Okay, now the masala. So in this masala, what is happening over here? So basically, he's showing in this masala, those people who can't prehend, pray behind others so if you remember we talked previously about you know there was that five types of people or six types of people we said that cannot lead prayer or should not lead prayer doesn't mean they can't they can if they do these are people that are not allowed to lead prayer right so who are they what are the situations so imagine an imam and then imam has followers the imam is considered to be someone who is supposed to be either superior in state to the followers or he has to be someone who is the same right so superior or he has to be the same therefore if you have an imam right and his state is not superior not the same it's less than the state of the followers he does not deserve to lead because leadership there should be something which is not deficient so here he brings a you know, list of scenarios. So he brings like seven examples of people who can't lead, and then he brings three examples of people who can lead to show this, to reflect this sort of um, this principle, right? So if I make a list over here now of these types, and the reason I'm making this list is just to show you guys how this basically works. Okay, so you've got like the imam, you've got the follower, and then you know, depending on what state the imam is in and the followers are in. You know, they can either lead or they can't. So, like we said, okay, so let's take the first one then. So let's say there is an imam. And this imam is um, in a state, a healthy state, right? So he's in a healthy state, he's in a clean state, as in he's done his wudu, he has no issue, no problem. So if you have this type of imam, right, what is the situation with this imam? Can he lead people who are clean as well. Of course he can. Can he lead people who are suffering from some sort of a medical issue which nullifies their wudu consistently, right? So, or continuously. Some people, unfortunately, are suffering from these kind of problems. May Allah give them shifa. Um, but if this is the case, then this person is allowed to lead such people, right? Because they are in a the same or superior state to the people that they are leading. However, if it's the other way around, if the imam is suffering from a, you know, um, a, a intermittent urine drops, right? So, and the people behind him are fine, right? Then he can't lead them, right? Cannot lead. Yes, if they are also suffering from urine drops, then he can lead them because his hal, his, his state is considered to be the same. So this is the first example out of the seven. Um, right, let's have a look at some more. This is the first one. لا يصلي الطاهر خلف من به سلس البول. A clean person, meaning a person who is not suffering from any medical issues, uh, which nullifies wudu, can pray, can 
uh, cannot pray behind someone, an imam, who is suffering from, uh, you know, urine inter intermittent drops. And is there another word in English for someone who suffers from, put in the comments, someone who suffers from uh, intermittent urine drops? I think I think you guys get what I'm saying. Yeah, hopefully, inshallah. Okay, so the second one now. So what about, let's say women prayer. We said, remember, can women lead women? Yes, they can. But it's considered to be disliked according to the Hanafis. So if a woman does lead other women, fine. Salat will be done. But what's her state? So she has to either be the same as the followers or she has to be in a superior state. So if the, the, the Imam is suffering from dysfunctional bleeding, so she's suffering from dysfunctional bleeding, what is going to happen to her, uh, her, her state of her Salat? So if she's leading people who are dysfunctional bleeding, that's fine. But if she's leading people who are healthy, then no, sorry. That will not be permissible and because of this what's going to happen she is going to be considered to be uh, her salat will not be valid not be valid it's not done okay so that's why women have to be very careful about this or anyone else for that matter number three let's say there's a person who does not know any quran at all it could be someone who's a new muslim or someone who hasn't been fortunate enough to be able to learn the quran so this person can they lead people who do not know quran Yes, they can. Why? Because the people who are leading are considered the same state as the followers. But if the followers are some people who can read Quran, enough Quran, how much Quran? Enough Quran for your Salat to be valid, like Fatiha and at least three ayats. Yeah, so if someone knows that much and can they pray behind an Imam who knows no Quran at all? No, they can't because it's that state, isn't it? The state is not superior, it's not the same. That's number three. Number four is what about a person who is naked? Now we said covering of the body is necessary, especially for the men between the navels and the knees and between and for women, it's all the body apart from the face, hand and feet. So uh, in this situation, what is going to happen uh, for this thing? So if the Imam is naked, meaning he doesn't have sufficient clothing for his body, he is not allowed to lead people who are clothed cannot lead people who are clothed right why because their state is more superior than the imams which goes totally against the idea of following or leadership in salat okay next um let's see number five isn't it? number 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 five so someone who indicates meaning let's say there's a person who cannot do like ruku and sujood properly so you've seen some people or you might have been in a similar situation where you can't do it so what do you do you sit down and you simply do the indications so instead of praying doing the ruku fully or sajda you do something which is known as indication ishara okay so this ishara that you do if the imam is in this situation he has a medical issue and he can't do ruku and sujood but instead of ruku and sujood he does ishara prays on a chair on the floor but can't do ruku and sujood Right. There's a difference between praying on the floor, he can lead people while sitting on the floor, but he can't lead them if he is uh, ishara. That's the important thing to remember. So if they are healthy people, can do full ruku and sujood, his state is considered to be a reduced state, a lesser state, which therefore does not qualify him to lead them. Number six is uh, someone who is praying nafal imam is praying nafal let's say he's just gone to the mosque and he's just started praying nafal and someone behind him hasn't prayed their dhuhr yet can that person who has not prayed their dhuhr pray behind such an imam the answer to this is no why is nafal the same as fard no is it superior no hence the imam who is praying nafal is not allowed to lead people who are praying fard Yes, some madhabs allow this, like the Shafi madhab will allow an imam who is praying nafal for someone else who wants to pray fard to pray behind him, but Hanafis do not allow this. Okay, next one. What if the imam is praying one fard, like he's praying dhuhr, and the follower wants to pray another fard behind him, like asr, he wants to pray asr behind him, or the imam is praying asr, and the follower has not prayed their dhuhr yet, like their qada or whatever, and he wants to pray dhuhr behind the imam who is praying his asr, is that allowed? Hanafi say no. Why? Because the two fards are not the same. All the fards are the same in the sense that they are obligations from Allah. But asr is not the same as dhuhr. These are two different, right, two different 
Okay, so these are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven mas'alas which the Imam cannot lead, absolutely not lead. And if someone has done this, they have to repeat their prayer. Right, what if, what about the three situations which where you can, right? So he mentions three situations where you can, right? So number one, let's say the Imam has done tayammum. The Imam, let's say, was on a journey, he's done tayammum, and the followers behind him have done wudu. Is that possible? Yes. Why not? That's fine. Why? Because these two are both obligations from Allah and they both are considered to be acts of purity which are established in the Quran. So therefore, tayammum is not lesser than wudu. They are both the same in respect to tahara, purification. Yes, if you have water available, you cannot do tayammum. So in that sense, tayammum is not allowed in the presence of water. But uh, otherwise, in, in the sense of both of them being acts of purification, they are allowed. Number two is a person who is um, has wiped over their leather socks. So the Imam's wearing leather socks and he's wiped over them, hasn't washed his feet. And the people behind them, behind the Imam, have um, no leather socks on and they have washed their feet. Can they pray behind such an Imam? So the answer to this is, Yes, why? Because again, both of these are endorsed and both of these are things that are established by the lawgiver. So therefore, their status is the same. In other words, washing of the feet is not considered to be superior to, to wiping the socks. Both are the same. The Prophet ﷺ did both. right? So this is why if the imam is in the wiping of the socks state and the followers are in the washing of the feet, they are both considered to be at the same level. And finally, the third one is that a person who is praying, uh, Imam is praying Fard, let's say Imam in the Masjid is praying Dhuhr, Fard, and someone has already prayed their Dhuhr, but they just want to pray Nafal behind the Imam, is this allowed? Yes, it would be allowed, right? Why? Because the Fard is superior to the Nafal. So these are three Mas'alas, which are, he says, which sometimes some people might assume that these are not allowed, but he says no, they are allowed, because even though there is an element of superiority, or the opposite, but Technically, there is none. Right? They're, they're the same. And the other seven examples that we mentioned are all examples where the Imam is in a lesser state than the followers. Okay, so let's link all these masalas together then. So the first one, وَلَا يُصَلِّ الطَّاهِرِ a, a Tahir, a, a person who is healthy, who does not have any medical condition, can not uh, pray behind someone who has a medical condition like you know, urine drops. And nor can a healthy woman uh, pray behind a, a, a woman, a female imam, who is suffering from dysfunctional bleeding. And nor can a person who can read Quran pray behind someone who cannot read Quran, uh, in the reading as in they memorize the Quran. Nor can a person who uh, uh, is clothed pray behind an imam who does not have sufficient clothing to cover his nakedness. And it's permissible for a person doing tayammum to lead people who have done wudu and it's permissible for someone who has wiped over his leather socks to wipe to to lead people who have washed their feet were washed and it's permissible for uh oh actually i missed one out so you can add this one in then right so i, I won't say it, but you can add it in i won't write it so it's the fourth one then so it's four so someone who is standing can pray behind someone who is sitting, right? So that's different from someone who's doing ishara. So the sitting person does full ruku and does full sajda, puts their head on the floor. So if the imam is, let's say, for example, has hurt himself, he can't stand up, but he can sit and he can do ruku and he can do sajda. This person can lead people who are healthy, fully standing, etc. Right? And uh, uh, a person who... Uh, who cannot do ruku and sujood cannot pray behind someone who does ishara. Yeah, so we said that. And a person who is praying fard cannot pray behind someone who is praying nafal, imam who is praying nafal. And a person who is praying a particular fard cannot pray behind someone who is praying another fard. Yeah. Uh, and finally, uh, a person who is praying nafal can pray behind someone who is praying fard. Okay. And that's it basically. So this is just one little addition that you guys don't have to write in. So there's actually four scenarios of Imams that are allowed. 
um, and the other one seven that are not allowed. So I hope you guys benefit from this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you benefited and liked this video, hit the like button, hit the bell button to receive regular updates. Check out the videos I make. Monday, I make videos on at the moment Sarf and Hadith. Tuesdays to be advanced. Arab and Tarkib of Surah Al Qasas. Wednesdays, Imam Shafi, Rahimullah poetry. Thursdays is today's. And Fridays, we have Kanzo Daqaiq, a bit advanced. Hanafi Fiqh. And Saturdays, we have, uh, oh, Thursdays, we also have a podcast in the evening. Saturdays, we have live QA and we also have Quran series. And uh, Sundays, we have uh, Surah Yasin and we have some other videos that I put up regularly as well. So, Jazakumullah Khair, guys. I wish you all a wonderful week and I'll see you guys next time, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair guys for all of your support. Without your support, I wouldn't have been able to produce the videos that I've put up on my YouTube channel. And there is so much more that I really want to do. And without the support of you guys who are patrons, generously supporting this channel, I've been able to get myself a camera, which as you guys can see, the quality of this camera, a mic system, software, I've been able to hire an editor. So what do I want to do? I want to make lots and lots and lots of more videos for beginners, for intermediate, advanced in the subjects like Arabic and Fiqh and Hadith and Tafsir and Aqeedah and all those other things as well. And for this to happen, again, this channel needs support. So if you guys want to become patrons and support this channel, then check out the link below. Also, if you do become patrons, you'll have access to videos that I don't put up on my normal YouTube channel. So check that out, inshallah. And there's most other perks as well that you guys can uh, benefit from. And if you want to um, access uh, this channel through social media, we've got Twitter, we've got Instagram, Facebook page, and other things as well that you can visit. So Jazakumullah khair again, guys. Thank you very much for your support. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair for watching this video. I hope to see all of you guys. If you guys are interested, please leave us feedback, get in contact with us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.